Some of you down that lens might think that this is a simple, basic golf lesson. But hopefully today I'm going to give you some tips that not only going to help the beginner golfer, but the more experienced golfer. And if you watch the end of this video and you know all these sorts of tips, let me know in the comments down below. Are they ones that you're still using or have you forgotten? Because so many of my lessons come into Shudo, I'll give them a tip and go, oh, I forgot that. Why have I forgotten that? That's so handy to have as a weapon in my golf bag. And this question pops up quite frequently, actually, in golf lessons. And it's how should your irons be sat on the floor? How should your irons sit on the ground to hit your best golf shots? And in this golf swing video, I'm going to give you sort of five ideas around the lies of your irons. I did a lie angle video on driver. If you missed it, make sure you go and click the links above and check that one out too. Very popular video. I hope that helps your golf game as well. So let's get started. What is lie angle to start with and how does it affect your golf ball? The lie of your golf club is this angle here. So lean edge of your club, the shaft coming out of the club here, this angle would be your static lie. Static lie, when you set up to the golf ball, this is what your lie angle would represent. There's also dynamic lie. So what this lie angle is at impact. Are you toe down? Are you toe up? Are you flat? Because this has an influence on where your ball is starting. My lie is nice and flat. It's pointing straight at the target. My toe moves up, my club face points more and more left, the more extreme it gets. The more I put that toe down, the more it points right. And this will change depending on what loft iron you have in your hands. A more lofted club, more upright is gonna be more extreme. A less lofted iron, more toe down is gonna be more extreme than a lofted one. So it does change and you need to be aware of that. Just a little disclaimer, before we carry on, flat and upright when I'm talking about it I'm gonna relate it to the club head not the shaft because if I go more upright with my club head so that toe is now more upright my shaft is actually getting flatter if I say flatter it will mean that the toe is going more down if I say the club's more upright it means that the toe is going up of the club head not that the shaft's more upright and the shaft's flatter it gets a bit confusing but i'm gonna try throughout this video and if i mess up in the comments down below and let me know i'm really sorry but i'm gonna try and relate it all to whether the club face is flat toed up or toed down disclaimer finished you need your club at impact to be flat on the ground with your lie to make it start in the direction that you're i guess aiming it at the start of your swing so i'm going to aim this down the line on my screen and i want that to now return flat when i hit it to get that ball to start in the right direction depending on whether my face to path is good or not as well as always in golf there's plenty of things that are going to make that ball do what it does but lie angle it can affect your start direction. And if you're not custom fit, I would go and suggest getting custom fit because that's going to lead us onto our next tip. Having the wrong club set up. Club's too long for you, which is going to now, if this club's too long for me, my toe of the club is going to be more upright. So you might start to fight hitting the ball left all the time. If your clubs are too short, that's going to push that toe into the ground and make your ball start more to the right. So if your clubs aren't custom fit for you, you're gonna start adjusting. So if I try and grip this really long and really upright, I'm now gonna do everything I can to stop this ball oh, going left. So I deliver my handle forward, my strike disappears, look. I see it so often, people coming into the studio, the wrong setup in length of shaft. It's not only lie, because the length of the shaft is gonna affect that lie. Too long a shaft makes your club more upright. Too short a club makes it flat. And then also, if you have the right length clubs, but then you have these bent or twisted to a different lie angle. So mine, I think a standard, but you can get upright, which would then make this toe go more up. You can get these flatter, which would make this toe go down. 
and then hopefully when you hit impact your dynamic lie will be flat on the floor again but i see so many people coming into the studio with the wrong equipment and then their swings are affected because of what they're using. Grip right down, this club's way too short for me now, this seven iron, that toe's in the ground. I'm gonna do everything I can to stop it starting right and fading, but look at it. There it goes, it's fading a little bit. I've done pretty well there, but I'm aware of it. And now I'm making movements to fight it. So double check that your equipment isn't affecting your lie angle at impact your dynamic lie. So assuming that our equipment is right for us, how do we get into sort of a basic setup that's gonna put us in the right position at the start of your golf swing, which will hopefully influence how you return that golf club to get the right dynamic lie? Let me know in the comments down below. Did you know this? At the start of your golf swing, so when you're setting up to the golf ball, the toe of your golf club should be a tiny bit off the ground compared to the rest of your club. So old school, you would put your club on the ground, try and slide a 2P coin under there. If you're American or somewhere else in the world, a small sort of coin slid under the toe and it should kind of go about, I don't know, a centimeter into the club, slightly upright. And that's because as you're swinging down, your club ugh, is gonna bend this way and you'll get some droop. Oh, I wish I had a flexier club. <laughs> I'm not ready for this today. But basically the club droops and that toe starts to go down a bit with the forces that you're putting through the shaft throughout your swing. And that's why at the start of your swing, in theory, a tiny bit upright on the toe is a good idea. And before someone comments down below, well, I set up like this and my club delivers like this. If your club is delivering flat impact because you've had it measured, 0, 0.0 degree lie when you hit the golf ball, dynamic lie, and you set up like this, or you set up like this, keep doing what you're doing, I'm happy. As long as it's flat, it's good with me. As a general rule for most of the golfers though, down that lens, if you start with the toe slightly up, then you won't have to manipulate so much in your swings. Super simple drill to make sure you're getting in the right position. So set yourself up, club parallel to the floor, grip it right in front of you, sort of arms about a fist away from your belt buckle. Once you're in that position, I want you to tilt from your hips until that club hits the ground. Add a bit of knee flex in there, and that's gonna be your good sort of solid golf posture and my toes a little bit up in the air. Really, really basic to get a good setup position. Club out in front of me, parallel to the floor, tilt from the waist, little bit of knee bend, and I'm ready to go. Now, if you're not setting up that way and you don't have your toe slightly up and it's more extreme, so no more toe down, more toe up, that can have a big effect on how you grip the golf club. So if I was to push my club in really upright, so the toe, is now, see, I've done it. Upright, I've said, with the shaft. Upright with the shaft, the toe is down. So if I was to set up with my toe, the club head down, which makes my shaft upright, that leads to people gripping really weak and right up the sort of palm of their hand. More up here, really, really weak positions. And the opposite, like if I have it hanging down and the toe of the club head is really high up and upright, but my shaft is a lot lower and flatter, that makes people really sort of now grip more in the fingertips and get a really strong grip. Look where I'm gripping that right in the fingertips and I'm gonna be seeing three, four knuckles on that lead hand. So I would always suggest making sure that before you set yourself up and move into that golf ball, make sure you've got your grip on the club or before you move into your setup. So like I did before, where I set myself up and bent from my waist, I already had the club in my hands, didn't I? I didn't come in here, put the club down, then grip it, and I'm in my setup. I am making sure that I've got my grip in the right place. Then I move, get the right distance away from it. Nice and straight, parallel to the floor, tilt from my waist, little bit of knee bend. And again, I'm in a really nice setup position 
to then hopefully return that club with the right dynamic lie. Super simple. And I see this so often, just people failing with the basic setup principles to hit great golf shots and strike those irons how you want to. I'm gonna say you can use those things though as a weapon to build your skills. If you're struggling with strikes, curvatures, just generally hitting the golf ball, start with those two tips. The setup, bending from your waist, and getting the grip in the right position. If you're confident with your strike and you want to start manipulating that golf ball in certain directions, fades, draws, lows, highs, start adding these weapons into your game. So if I'm behind a tree and I need to draw one round it, I'll get that toe of that club more upright. So it's closing that face. I'll get my handle lower. I'll start gripping it a lot stronger. I'll get my stance and my tilts of my body, my postures a lot lower to match to where that shaft is. Now I can really start to release that golf club more and get that ball drawing round that tree look. I'm using it as a weapon, although my lie isn't 0.0 on the ground anymore. It is towed up. I'm using that to my advantage. I go more towed down, more upright with the shaft, but more towed down with the club head. Now I start to grip it weaker in my hands. I aim a little bit more up the left. I'm now gonna be really holding off, cutty, fadey into this golf hole. Look at it, fading into the target. If it's a nice shot, let's hit the green. If you start to strike that golf ball better, you want to improve your golf game. You want to start moving the golf ball because the wind's off the right or off the left. You want to draw it against it. You want to fade it with it. You want to hit a tucked pin position. So many reasons why you might want to do this. Ball above your feet, ball below your feet to counteract those slopes. Use this as a weapon. Get yourself one of these little indicator sticks. They're really handy to start understanding what the club face is doing throughout your swing, with impact at setups. You can really start to work it out. Like literally, if I open my face, close my face, add loft, take loft off, point it to the ceiling, point it to the floor, point it over my head. Like I know where that indicator is pointing all the time. Super cheap, really easy to find. Just go and get yourself one. The basics of lie angle and what it can do for your game. And I would say the not so basics towards the end there, using it to your advantage. Lots of golfers, get yourself set up properly, grip the club first, then tilt from your waist, a little bit of knee bend. You'll get that club slightly towed up at a dress, which will get that club returning nicely at impact to hit good nice and straight and long golf shots. I hope that helps. If you're enjoying the channel and the content and you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Hit the thumbs up, turn the bell on so you get notified of when I upload all my new videos. I hope that helps and I'll see you in the next one.